previously on Dirt Nights. Got to be the closest spot to the sun today. Probably going to be pretty good tonight. Felt really good. Oh my God! The son of a <laughs> killed on me! Don't look, look at me while I'm thinking. Derek Ramirez, your winner. We know we got a good hot rod to get back home and fix the stuff we broke for the night. National Points Championship is littered with twisted sheet metal and beaten drivers. Heads up, the 31 car off over the top of the back stretch. How in the hell can that happen? The four-night start of the hunt for a U.S. MTS points title left a number of big-name teams exhausted and beaten down in the searing Kansas heat. Our hopes for a championship are completely gone. Now it's money racing every night. But few are ready to abandon one of the tightest hunt races in years, so the best modified racers in the country are back on the road. Their destination? Webster City, Iowa, and the legendary half mile of dirt known as the Hamilton County Speedway. It's cool. It's not uh, Kansas heat. We're not in a kiln today. We got uh, little Gustin over there. He's, uh, although he's pretty young, he's got a lot of laps on this track. He cut his teeth here. And uh, if I had money to bet on anybody, I'd bet it on him tonight. But uh, he'll be good. We might not be too bad either. We like, I like half miles. That's my favorite track. Run my first race here, and which was basically won a ton of races here over the years. My dad's raced here, you know. Whole family's raced here, more or less. She does real good outside where we go through a lot of body parts. In fact, tonight's race is like a Gustin family reunion. Most of the family is here, with Dad Rick racing a street stock and 14-year-old sister Janae running a B-Mod, with Grandpa Dick, the one who started it all, working the pits. Been in the racing game since 1955. We started back in the old 49 Flathead Fords. We done a lot of go-kart racing when we was younger. That's where Ryan started at. Started when he was three years old, and he's been at it ever since. The moral support will come in handy because after four events, the race for a U.S. MTS National Points Championship is a tight one. Only three points separate the top three contenders with Ryan Gustin in the lead. Fellow Dirt Knight Derek Ramirez sits in the fifth position, while John Tesh is 61 points back in ninth. He may have run his first race in a full-size car here, and he knows the track as well as anybody, but that won't matter if the motor on the 19R isn't ready. We broke this motor the other night, or we didn't break it. We caught, we caught a problem with it. What happened was the camshaft start, started to pit on one of the lobes, and it ended up uh, knocking the bearing out of one of the roller lifters. With just a few hours before hot laps, the Gressel Racing Team decides to swap out motors, which means all hands on deck. What do you think, 616? Probably, yeah. The motor change is nearly complete, but will it hold up for the night? Okay, I got a new deal. John Tess, you were the first one here. Here's a $100 bill. Being first to the rules meeting pays off for Tesh, but he'd rather be first on the track tonight. You can definitely use more motor at this place. Really black, black dirt. They got it wet. A lot, a lot of traction in it. This place got long straightaways, fairly tight corners, so. Uh, we didn't have enough gear in it. This racetrack's really tight. Um, Felt like we had some pretty good speed, just not enough gear. Uh, but starting in the back again, track position is going to be a premium because it's so narrow getting in. I, it's going to be difficult to get in too wide. You're going to have to go in behind somebody, I think.
Cripps gets the first shot at the Hamilton County Speedway in heat one, where he starts dead last. The original Dirt 9, the big cock chassis, the K2 agronomy, Casey General Store Car 31 as Corey drips, and we're underway. Michael Darnell on a West Union down the back straightaway takes on from this field. Mike Elbert's in the Z3 car trying to come up through. Jason Crone trying to get on the inside. Here we go. Elbertson, try out Crone. How bad are you going to get it? Yeah, it stays just the way they started. Jason Crone out of Slayton, Minnesota will bring around, here tonight, the Spots Horsepower to the line winner of heat race number one. Kelly Triac, second. Let's get the back of the car up in the air. We're going to go deeper gear yet. And uh, I'm going to take that left rear out of the index hole and all that trickery that's going on there. Get it more traditional. The 31 wasn't exactly stellar. And the guys make a discovery that could be more trouble. That's something simple. Um, these last two nights not making the money shows killing us. It's uh, we need gas money right now. We're we're down to our last. So uh, I need to get in the same name tonight just to uh, go to the next track. Definitely. A great opportunity for the 17S in the fourth race of his comeback. He leads Heat Two to the green with fellow knight John Tash starting in seven. We're getting ready to go back racing. Three wide, and they come to the line. Mike Spaulding, Mike Sorensen. It's Mike and Mike. Here they come. It'll be Mike Sorensen leading. John Tesh on the outside of Pat Graham for position, and Teshi out of Watertown, South Dakota, will now move up into fourth. Spalding rim riding, and that opens the door for Tesh. John Tesh drives it way down in that bottom groove. Keep an eye off of turn two. The race right now for third place. White flag displayed once more time here at the Hamilton County Speedway. Checker flag in hand, hit it on, and Mike Sorensen out of Rochester, Minnesota, will win heat number two. Colt Mather comes home second, and third place, hanging on, hit it on, is Mike Spalding out of Bemidji in car 17S. The 17S still isn't quite ready for the fast track to the feature. He'll have to run another B. On the track, family night for the Gustin crew is in full swing with Dad Rick wheeling the 19A stock car. And little sister Janae running hammer down in the 19J B mod. But Ryan hasn't been on the old familiar Hamilton County half mile yet. And when he does, he'll have an untested motor under the hood. The nightly battle to solve the mystery of speed on the dirt is in full swing in Webster City, Iowa. On the track, it's time for the Gressel Racing Team to test the new power cell in the 19R. He'll line up with the 4R of Derek Ramirez in Heat 4. Looks better this time. I like it. High box spring, Heat number 4. Vanderbeek again takes off. Scotty Olson in second. 
Got company now alongside, and that's Derek Ramirez in the 4R car. And a Coors Light Boomer Well Services entry out of Oklahoma. Down into turn one. Ramirez second. Gustin runs in third. Now going to try the high side, and oh, that'll leave a mark. Halfway through the heat, and Gustin looks solid, but the new motor may be in trouble. We'll be looking at the white flag. Brian Saley lets him know one more time around. Ramirez runs in second. The boom test. Car 4R. Gustin will give him one last charge. And if Air Tire Incorporated, car 19R to Marshalltown, that ain't working. Tommy Weeder Jr. in fourth. Checker flag. Again for Ibox Springs, heat number five. And it's the Z Man, Zach Vanderbeek. A second and a third for Ramirez and Gustin. Both will be in the feature, but will the 19R be ready? Did you ever get on your brakes harder at one point than anything else? Definitely out of the motor then. How hard did it turn? Put that 175 back in the right rear. What? Just the 175 spring. It sounds like another frustrating night so far in the Al Haina can. We gotta make some better adjustments for the B feature. He struggled through his heat, starting third and losing two spots. He's been like this all season for the A-Train. Searching for the right adjustment here. Uh, fooled myself somehow in that heat race. I'm not used to having a car that turns. My old car, I mean, you literally had to stick the brake and get the back end into the corner and then mash on the gas. This car turns. This is certainly Mike Spaulding's best chance at qualifying for a feature since returning to the track. But he can't afford to lose any ground in B-Main number one. He'll start a row behind John Tesh, with Al Haina starting seventh. Continues open advantage now by eight, 10 car length over Tim in second. The race right now shaping up for that number two spot as you see coming off at turn number four, there's Teshi, but here comes Reuter. Ryan Reuter and the triple nickel. Mike Folding runs in for the 17S, fifth place. Oh boy, here comes Graham in a 1K car. And we've come to the white flag. John Tesh, your leader in car 14. Second place remains Bob Tim, Ryan Ruder, Folding, Rodney Sanders, and Doug Hilson now in the top six. Pat Graham sitting in seventh in car 1K. Check her flag this time by for a real race wheel. B feature number one. John Tesh will win it. Ruder second, Tim third. Falling forth. A great run for the Wizard of Watertown. But the most excited guy in the pits is Mike Spaulding, who qualified for his first feature just when he needed it most. Well, we need the money for fuel. <laughs> so, getting better. I'm, I'm starting to get a little more comfortable. I'm trying to drive straight, cost a little more on my throttle. Yeah, let me finish here real quick. In the Gressel camp, crew chief Joe Bob Sianowski has diagnosed the smoking motor as a problem of too much oil. Had about a, probably two quarts too much oil in it. Did it? Yeah, it drained out for a while, and the only how we, I can think of that happening is if that accumulator wasn't empty when we charged it today. So the motor is fine, and the 19R will be ready. Another B main. I hate being in these damn things. But, uh, get after it. Get up on the wheel make something happen here. We gotta pass some cars to get in. On the track, the 31 of Corey Drips is in a B-main battle for a spot in the feature. Corey Drips on a Waterloo. Again, that final transfer spot in an item car 31. This time by your leader, taking a white flag. 
Tommy Meyer out of Blooming Prairie. Car 65 leads. Johnny Scott, Kevin Pittman in third. Fourth place again is Tommy Weider, Shane Devane, and Corey Drift. As this is it, final lap again here tonight. Our real race wheel speed feature number two. Coming around, started outside. The front row, the Westland Diesel. Car 65, Tommy Meyer wins it. Johnny Scott, Pittman will move on. Drift just makes it in the last transfer spot, which means the car is far from perfect. And my brake pedal went to sponge. We need to bleed that. I need more gear yet. I just can't go. And I really need some forward drive. How's that sound? Simple. Okay. Hamilton County Speedway in Webster City, Iowa. It's nearly feature time on the legendary half mile. Mike Spaulding is ready. The comeback is complete as he rolls out for his first feature. Corey Drips, John Tesh, and Derek Ramirez will also line him up. And starting 11 is the Reaver, Ryan Gustin, who started his career on this very patch of dirt and rolls out with some sage grandfatherly advice in his head. You can do good. Do the best you can, all you can do. 35 laps, 24 cars, as they pick it up off a of turn four. Ladies and gentlemen, we're racing in Webster City. Sorensen gone. Here come Dunlinger, Shryock, see ya. Dunlinger to second, Shryock to third. Nate Carew sits back and forth as coming around the lead, lap number one. It's a 19 of Mike Sorensen. wide farther back in turn two but we keep our attention up front with Sorensen and Dunlinger battling now to the top side didn't take long to find a 19 R car Ryan Gustin now into fifth Jason Crone is fourth Kelly Triock third Tim Dunlinger second, and Mike Sorensen lead. Ryan Gustin inside of Jason Drone. He'll now move into fourth. Drone now back another spot in fifth. Driving like a man on a mission, the Reaper quickly moves up through the field. You talk about a funnel. Boy, do these guys pinch each other down going down to turn one. They just squeeze each other right to that bottom groove and look up front. You're going to have yourself a new leader here very shortly as Kelly Triox is now with her up Dunlinger and he is going after Sorensen and Triox now inside for the lead. Kelly Triock looking for the lead. And the car off the pace here tonight. They'll pull it in and we'll say green flag racing. And again, car three on the move. He better be because here comes the 19 of Gustin inside of Sorensen. Gustin, see ya! The Reaper coming up through the field. Ryan Gustin out of Marshalltown, Iowa. Now trying to chase down Triock, your leader. Who says you can't pass here? The Hamilton County Speedway. I think there's plenty of passing, and there's more to come. Jason Crone, Jason Hughes, your top five. 
As the lamps continue to wind down, hit it on Gustin now, battled right back to the front. Here we go as they head into turn number one. Gustin this time going on the outside off the of turn four. Dead even as they come to line. We're 20 laps into a 35 lap feature in Webster City, Iowa. And the top three drivers in the hunt for a national championship are the top three drivers on the track right now. Gustin this time going on the outside off the of turn four. Dead even as they come to line. And the 19 of Gustin leads him into turn one. How will it be off of turn number two? Ryan Gustin will take the point. Triac will drive right back on the inside. Get out of here. Not in my house. Triac comes back inside as they come down drag racing. While Gustin and Triock battle it out in front, John Tesh is having a great run back in the pack. He started 13th, but is up to 6th. Watch again as Gustin brings the field off at turn 4, pulling away now. That Gressel Racing, car 19. Triac in second. Oh, he clips the tire and Triac will go around. Oh, my. Rolling the dice. Kelly Shack and car three when he come off the corner. Contact and around it goes. Yowza. It's taken a bit to find those final 15 laps. We've got three to go right now as Gustin back on the hammer. Gustin said, I don't care. Go down to the bottom. I like the top and wing it right through and fly. The Gressel Racing. Car 19R, Ryan Gustin. Bringing him around off of turn number four. Jason Doe now off the pace in car 7K at a top five finish. It will be for not hit it right as a right rear down. And we'll see. It looks like he is just going to pull it to the infield and will stay green. White flag, one to go. Ryan Gustin, Jason Hughes, Zach Vanderbeek. Top three, Tommy Meyer now pulls into fourth. Tim Dunlinger sets in fifth as a checkered flag, and Ryan Gustin will add to that national point lead with an A-Main feature win. Another thrilling feature win for the 19R. Hamilton County Speedway rarely disappoints, especially if your name is Gustin. Good job. Good job. An incredible 13th win of the season for Ryan Gustin brings a great night to a close in Webster City. This is where he won his first race, you know, when he was uh, 12 years old. I don't know what to say about the kid. He, he, he can get it done. But on the hunt, whether you win or lose, one thing doesn't change. The okay, night is right. short, and Don will bring another town, another track, and another race. people in this great nation of ours, a lot of people, who call this flyover country. But this is America, where homes are carved from the cornfields, and a two-wheeler can still rule the streets, where the local attractions include the famous Hobo Museum, and Perkins Garage still takes care of its customers one at a time. In Britt, Iowa, life is comfortable and quiet. 
except once a week when the thunder rolls at the Hancock County Speedway. Brit may be famous for its hobos, but tonight the wandering vagabonds of the USMTS take the spotlight. The hunt is on for a national championship, but after running the first feature of his comeback last night, Mike Spaulding is running on fumes, in the tank and in the wallet. Yeah, I'm gonna give the wife a call here. Um, I've got $124 left on my card. I haven't got enough to even get enough fuel to race the rest of the night here. How's the luck? 500 will work. Hi, sexy. How are you? Hi, sweetie. I missed you. you know some sweet talking you kind of in here? Yeah. Let's talk to Sue. If you can give Sue the information on your bank, she's going to wire 500 bucks in here. Because I need money. Okay. I don't even have gas fuel money tonight. Okay. Well, that's one thing I like running with these USMTS with the promoters. Um, Todd and Janet are always willing to, to help the driver out to get him to that next show. For guys in my situation, that's, that's the only way right now I'm racing. So it's a big plus. So Spaulding will run another night, but he needs to make the feature. And after a difficult heat, he's in a B-main battle to do it. Fortunately, of the 10 cars in this B, all but two will make the feature. Corey Drips is in command, but Spaulding is on the bubble. And look at that middle groove line is the place to be right now, making up some time down to the white flag. Yes, indeed, and right now I'm coming back. And those final two spots, not gonna make it in as Doug Hilson will hold everything. Here comes Spaulding back now. That's a race for that final transfer spot. Spaulding now digs back in. Here comes Hilson back around off of turn four as they come to the line, crossover move, and Hilson will hold off the advantage and advance on to the A main. What a finish for the most excitement I've had for the number 10 spot. Eight cars get into the feature. Spaulding finished ninth. We missed qualifying by one. But it sounds like somebody might be a scratch. Ruder, triple nickel might a scratch. So uh, if he did, that put us in the show. The modified feature in Britt, Iowa is underway. And the 17S of Mike Spaulding is not in the field. None of the qualified drivers dropped out. So Spaulding is on the sideline again. On the track, John Tesh started 14th and is up to 9th, and the Reaper, Ryan Gustin, started 22nd and is all the way up to 10th, while Corey Drips battles in the back of the field. Jason Hughes will swing the 12 part of the outside, had a run for a minute, has got that run as we hit the three. He and Rodney Sanders going to battle for the third spot. the 31. Corey Drips will bring out the yellow flag as he and the 16 of Austin Siebert out of Grandview, Missouri got together in the 31 and sitting the wrong way on the front straightaway. Corey Drips, the BC chassis. Running near the top 10 with just five laps to go, this spin out will cause Corey Drips close to $500. The 31 team's luck can't get much worse. As we said, sit tight, hang on, it's going to be a wild ride. Five laps remain. Tommy Meyer will hit it right now. On the restart, Ryan Gustin hooks the back end of the 85 and peels open the 19R like a sardine can, but it doesn't slow him down. Jason Hughes, Jason Cole, side by side, wheel to wheel, and look at body damage. Look at the door being blown off the 19 G, 19R car. Augustin Meyer pulling away now. So tire smoke off the 19 of Gustin. Jason Hughes on the outside. Where did Hughes come from? Way upstairs in this one we come to the white flag. A mad dash in the front. Hughes may not be done yet. He found that high one. But he Second, Jason Hughes to the top two, but on a turn at number four, he dominated here tonight. It'll be the 65 of Tommy Meyer. A 
a difficult night in Brit calls for a little R&R. Luckily, the road to the next track in Fountain City, Wisconsin goes right past Rookie's Rockin' Sports Bar in Clear Lake, Iowa. Owned and operated by the A-Train, Al Haina and his brother Mike. <laughs> Why do I keep racing? That's what I do. My dad started racing when I was one, and all I can remember was wanting to be a race car driver. These are all my heroes. The guy we race against, Kelly Shyrock. This is his dad, Bob. This is Kelly right here. My dad quit, I think, 1972, so I was only 10 years old when he quit racing. When I was 21, I said I was going to get a car, we're going to go enduro racing. We went out the first night, I'd never raced before, and we won it, and that was $1,000. And that was, I thought that was a hell of a lot of money. I thought, man, this is an easy game. We're going to keep doing this. Like we were talking today when he asked if that's an addiction, I would say it's more like gambling because you'll spend that money on a motor or a car and thinking, this is, the, this is the time. Just like when you put that 20 in a slot machine, okay, this one's gonna make me the big bucks. That's why, you know, we get so upset because we have so many expectations and we're working our ass off. Like right now, I'm struggling. I'm not running like I'm used to. I'm used to running, you know, being, having a shot at winning or running up front. There's a lot bigger problems in the world than, you know, not doing well at the racetrack. In this small town shrine to dirt track racing, the Knights will forget the stress of the hunt race. At least for one night. Tomorrow, and yet another town and another track will come soon enough. It get... <laughs> if there ain't a bigger idiot, I don't know. God. Fountain City, Wisconsin the home of Mississippi Thunder Speedway. Gone are the flat farmlands and endless cornfields of Iowa, replaced by the steep rocky peaks of the Mississippi River Bluff Country in southwest Wisconsin. And the signs of a long dirt track racing tradition sit rusting on the hillsides. Half the dirt night teams are already hard at it, but the guys that whooped it up at Rookies are still in Clear Lake. Betting the forecast for rain in Wisconsin will come true. Snow good, 40% all the way through. I thought it was even more after that. But. It was sunny half hour ago when I brought this yeah. in. Yeah. Now it's clouded over. I mean, we got, it's two and a half hours. So I say, if it isn't raining by 2.30, we better take off. But. Will the rains come? Or will Haina, Drips, and Spalding be making a mad dash to the track? It's a beautiful afternoon in Fountain City, Wisconsin, with no rain in sight. This big truck, you could go in 70, 75. The bet on the weatherman didn't pay off for Mike Spaulding, Corey Drips, and Al Haina. For them, the race starts right now. A race to get to the track and ready to roll by hot laps. In Fountain City, the Tesh team is ready. Ready for tonight and overdue for a feature win. Any wins on the season? Yeah, so That's far. a negative. How do I feel about that? Not very good. But uh, we'll change. We'll change it one of these nights. We'll get it. Just stay on top of our game and keep working hard. We'll get it. The Haina and Spalding rigs pull up just in the nick of time, but a lack of preparation may cost them on the track. Nice forecast, weatherman. Missed this one big time. figure out Mississippi Thunder Speedway in a hurry. God. We're getting worse every race. Every race, we get worse. 
It just seems like this car has no traction out there right now, so. It runs, I mean, it runs fine tempo-wise out there. And then after idled down, pulling in, that flagman just said it's blowing water out. I was at 230. Is that easier or harder? Hey, what? is that easier or harder the second time? Harder. It is? Now than it was a minute ago. OK, try it now. OK. okay. Now what? Is it harder or easier? Easier. OK, that's opposite of what you said the last time. B-Main number one features the 14 of John Tesh, and he needs to get past at least four cars to make the feature. Hank Rollier Jr. holding on to third, but John Tesh using that high line, trying to get up alongside of him and challenge for the position. Right flag is out, one lap to go on this one. The man on the bubble is Adam Stockhouse in the 59X. Is he going to be able to hold on? Checkered flag is in the air for Kelly Shryock. Rodney Sanders battle for third. Dead heat between Stockhausen and Tesh. Tesh is in the money race. That leaves four dirt knights fighting for the top six in B main number two. I made a bar change on the right rear. Um, change the spring in the right rear, uh, as well as a spring in the lift arm, and then we put some pinion angle into it trying to get the car to stop from sliding in the, um, in the corner. So uh, we're pretty good now. We got her buttoned up. Flagman gives him the eye. Green flies out. We're going racing. Tommy Meyer is going to lead us into turn number one. Keep an eye on young Lucas shot as the 69 tries to work around the bottom. He's currently holding on to second. It's Meyer, shot, and Ramirez. One, two, three, through three and four. Who's it going to be? We're leading the first lap. It's going to be Tommy Meyer. Tommy Meyer leads lap number one. The Lucas shot is right there to keep him on us. Challenging for the lead in turn two. Good shot on the bottom. Meyer on the top as they enter turns three and four. This youngster knows no fear. Coming out of four, your leader's going to continue to be Tommy Meyer. Just a couple of laps in, the Hena nightmare continues. We got a tangle between one and two. That's Lance Hofer and Al Hana getting tangled up in that one. That's going to bring out the caution. This is about as bad as it's been. I, I don't remember racing ever being worse. Al will have to go to the back of the pack, but he's not the only one with problems. Mike Spaulding has a radiator leak and is done for the night. Squirt the water out of our bleeder, heavy. And uh, it's not worth ruining the motor, so. Back on the track, Tommy Meyer leads the way with Corey Drips and Derek Ramirez just two laps away from a ticket to the feature. White flag is in the air. One more lap around, one more circuit around this third mile speedway for Tommy Meyer. Lucas shot. Corey Drips, Derek Ramirez, Ryan York. And Josh Angst. Here comes Tommy Meyer out of turn number four. Checkered flag is in the air. Meyer takes the win. I kind of felt like I was driving the semi. I had a lot of shit going on there, and driving was about third. Right. You were texting, or? The field is set, and we'll go green at Mississippi Thunder Speedway when Dirt Knights returns. The hunt for a National Modified Points Championship has been a wild affair so far. After taking the lead with a win two nights ago in Webster City, Ryan Gustin fell back out of the lead last night in Brent. He'll need another big night tonight to reclaim the top spot from Jason Hughes. Actually won my first time here. The last time we were here, it was uh, like 21st and ended up third. So. Get around this place pretty good. Uh, come future time, we'll be right up there. Gustin will start on the inside of row three with the 12 car of Jason Hughes just two spots behind him. Caution flags out. Green flags out, we're going racing. 
Jay Lurkey is going to lead us into turn number one. Andy Mostang up high. The zero two of Wiener on the bottom. Keep an eye through turns three and four. Zach Vanderbeek back in the fourth spot. Looking to make his move up. Ryan Gustin trying the low side of Erky. Mostang looking at a high side. We're going to go three wide through turn one. His way underneath Jay Erke with a hard slam into turn number one. Some rough driving from the visiting hot shoe gets in the lead. It takes just three laps for the Reaper to go from fifth to first, and the 19R shows no signs of slowing down. Up front, it's all Ryan Gustin with a 10 car advantage over Jay Erke, Andy Bolsagel, and now Zach Vanderbeek taking a look on the low side of Bolsagel for third. Back in the pack, the rest of the Knights are struggling with a crowded racetrack. Corey Drips, John Tesh, and Derek Ramirez are fighting for real estate in the back of the field. Up in front, the Reaper has the whole field in his rear view mirror, and he's already lapping in the back of the pack. And he's got Meyer between them. And the 7 of Carruth on the high side. They're going to go three wide through one and two. Bob Tim and Toe in the 49, and then the 3 via Tim Dowling are getting in the mix. It isn't long before the Reaper is putting the pressure on his fellow Dirt Knights. Our leader, the number 19 of Ryan Gustin on the front straightaway now, racing into turn number one under John Tesh. Just about ready to put Kelly Shryock a lap down. There's something you don't see every day. Ryan Gustin, your leader, exiting turn two, three wide with Corey Drips and the 20 machine of Rocky Sanders. Thirty-seven laps down now. Picking his way through lap traffic, Ryan Dustin making a push for the feature win, the 3,000 to win race here tonight, the 19 car. White flag is in the air. One more lap to go. Coming from Marshalltown, Iowa. Two more turns for the 19 R. Your winner in the hunt race tonight, there he is, Ryan Gustin! When the Reaper gets it rolling, there are few that can stay with him. The 19R laps nearly half the field and wins by half a track for his 14th trophy of the season. Making the drive from Marshalltown, Iowa, Ryan Gustin! Definitely a confidence booster after a night like last night, trying 12, 14, or whatever we did, but we went a pretty dominant win. So that's uh, definitely a confident bo confidence booster that helps out a lot. Two wins in three nights, and the roller coaster run for a national title continues with Ryan Gustin climbing back to the top after seven races. But the lead over Jason Hughes is just 10 points, and we're not even halfway done. Driver tries to embarrass me by laughing me again on national television, and you and me are going to be wrestling on the front stretch. <laughs> Gustin was unbelievably fast, and I, I can barely believe how fast he was, actually. Since it's already almost tomorrow, and there's another race in another town, the crews start loading up to hit the road again. Some on a roll, and others searching desperately for answers. We're going to load up and drive for five or six hours and get to where we're going tomorrow. Maybe we can do something there. I just never get the car to stick to right rear and go forward. I'm just pussyfooting it, skating on it the entire time. This game passes people by and I'm getting at that age. Next week on Dirt Nights. An incredible amount of talent, you know, at his age, more than anybody that he's racing with has had at that age. Stressful with a new crew, stressful with a new car. Ready to give it our all tonight. Give him hell. Be patient. <laughs>